Welcome to the deep dive. We're going deep on uh, indoor air quality today, IAQ. IAQ, that's right. And uh, we've got a lot of research and case studies on a really interesting technology called MESP. Yeah, you know, most people, I think, don't realize how much the air inside, like their homes and offices. Yeah. And, you know, the places where they spend their time really affects their health and well-being. It's true. It's kind of an invisible force. It is. Impacting, you know, everything. What, what is it we're dealing with here? What's in the air that we should be concerned about? Oh, there are so many things. Yeah. Um, you know, we're talking about tiny particles like PM2.5 right. that can lodge deep in our lungs, uh, viruses, bacteria that are hitching a ride on dust particles, Ugh. volatile organic compounds. VOCs. VOCs, exactly. Released right. from everyday materials and, you know, even odors that can just make a place feel stuffy and unpleasant. I mean, it sounds like trouble. Yeah. And is it, I mean, it, is it more than just feeling a little sniffly? Oh, yeah, not at all. Um Poor indoor air quality has been linked to a whole host of issues. Oh, wow. Respiratory problems, allergies. You can have reduced cognitive function. Um, and it can even increase the risk of certain diseases. Really? And then, you know, on, on a larger scale, you can have decreased productivity, higher health care costs. And it can even lead to legal issues for businesses. I had no idea the impact was so far reaching. So then that's where this MESP technology comes in, I guess. Is that the superhero here? I think MESP is definitely a game changer. Okay. It's a sophisticated evolution of electrostatic precipitator technology or ESP. OK. But with like serious upgrades. Okay. You know, imagine a system that not only captures these microscopic pollutants, but also zaps viruses and bacteria in the process. Wait a minute. So it's doing both. That sounds too good to be true. How does that work? Well, let's break it down. Okay. Um, so the magic happens in three key steps. So yeah. first you have a charge grid, and this gives a negative charge to all those nasty particles, putting a target on their backs. Then the MESP filter, which has a strong opposite charge, acts like a powerful magnet, attracting and capturing those charged particles. Oh, okay. So it's like a like a super efficient air filter. Yes. Yeah, but you said something about destroying the viruses and bacteria. Exactly. And this is where MESP really stands out. Yes. Um, the electrostatic field created by the MESP filter doesn't just trap those harmful microbes. It disrupts their structure, rendering them harmless. So you're not just removing pollutants. You're also actively disinfecting the air. That's impressive. Yeah. So you're getting purification, sterilization all in one system. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Um, how does this all compare to other air purification methods? Yeah. Like HEPA filters and UV lights. So those traditional methods, they're useful, yeah. but they have their limitations. So, for example, HEPA filters, great at trapping particles. Right. But they need frequent replacements. Yeah. And they don't actually kill germs. UV light can be effective for disinfection, but it requires careful installation. Right. And can be harmful to humans if it's not used properly. Right. So it sounds like MESP is offering a more comprehensive solution and a longer-term solution. Mm -hmm. Speaking of long-term... What about this washable filter? I've heard about that. Yes. Tell me more. So one of the biggest advantages of MESP is its sustainability. Yeah. Unlike those traditional filters that need to be tossed out and replaced, the MESP filter can be washed and reused over 100 times. It can last up to 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. That's wild. No more going to the store every you know, month or whatever it is for a new filter. Yeah. And environmentally, that's huge. Exactly. And it gets even better. Okay. The MESP filter achieves a MRV14 rating. Wow. Which means it captures over 99% of particles, even those as small as 0.3 microns. And that is tiny. We're talking about catching particles that are 1,200 the width of a human hair. That's incredible. So how does all this translate into real world results? I mean... Are companies and organizations seeing benefits from MESP? Oh, absolutely. And we're not just talking about, you know, small scale operations. Oh. Some really big names have jumped on the MESP bandwagon. Companies like Alibaba, ByteDance, DJI, Hilton, even the Standard Bank of South Africa. That's a pretty impressive list. It is. I mean, I'm assuming they're not doing it just for the warm, fizzy feeling of clean air. Not at all. Yeah. These companies are seeing tangible benefits. Improved employee health and productivity, reduced energy costs, and they're boosting their brand image as leaders in sustainability. Okay, well, you've definitely piqued my curiosity. Good. Can you tell me more about some of these real-world success stories? I mean, how is MESP making a difference in different settings? Absolutely. And it's not just businesses either. Hospitals, with their critical need for sterile environments, are seeing amazing results with MESD technology. But we'll dive into those details in the next segment. 
For now, let's focus on those big name companies and see what they've achieved with MESP. All right, so let's take a closer look at some of these companies like Alibaba, ByteDance, and DJI. Yeah. And, you know, how they're using MESP to their advantage. Yeah, these are these are companies that are, I mean, they're tech giants constantly yeah. innovating. Right. So it's really interesting to see how they're embracing this. It is. What kind of results are they seeing? Well, so take Alibaba, for example. Okay. They've implemented MESP systems in several of their buildings, uh -huh. including their headquarters. Right. And they've reported significant improvements in indoor air quality. Uh, reduced levels of PM 2.5, VOCs, even those pesky airborne viruses and bacteria. So it's really about, I mean, it's not just making the air smell better, it's making it healthier. Exactly. A safer place for their workforce. Absolutely. And it's not just Alibaba. Yeah. ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, has also seen impressive results. Oh, wow. They've installed these systems in their offices, their data centers. Okay. And they've reported reduced employee sick days and increased productivity. That's a win-win for everybody. It is. What about DJI? DJI. The drone company. Yeah, so DJI is a fascinating okay. case study. They've actually integrated MESP technology into their drone manufacturing facilities. It's interesting. And they found that it really helps to control dust and other airborne particles, right. which is crucial for maintaining the precision and quality of their products. So it's like they're creating a clean room environment without the need for, you know, exactly those really expensive energy intensive methods. Precisely. And it's not just tech companies. Yeah. Hilton, the global hospitality giant, has also been a pioneer in right. adopting MESP technology. Interesting. What kind of results are we talking about? Well, in one pilot project at a Hilton in New York, they saw energy savings of over 65% compared to traditional filtration systems. Wow. That's huge. And their return on investment was estimated to be between 1.66 and 2.5 years. Those are numbers that get people's attention. They do. And it's not just about the money. It's about reducing environmental impact. Absolutely. And speaking of impact, yeah. let's shift gears a little bit and talk about hospitals. These are environments where clean air is absolutely critical. Right. And MESP is proving to be a game changer in infection control. Yeah, hospitals are on the front lines of fighting infectious diseases. They are. So to have a technology that can effectively remove viruses and bacteria from the air, mm. I mean, that's got to be a big advantage. It's a huge advantage. Yeah. So. You know, hospitals have unique challenges when it Man. comes to indoor air quality. Of course. You have patients with compromised immune systems. Right. Healthcare workers are constantly exposed to pathogens. Sure. You have a constant flow of people in and out. Absolutely. So how are they using MESP in these settings? Yep. Well, they're using a variety of types of MESP units, right. depending on the needs of the different areas. Makes sense. For example, they use FAH units, F -H. which stands for AHU purifier. Okay. These are designed to be integrated into a building's air handling system. Okay. They're often used in large spaces like lobbies, waiting rooms, and even operating rooms. So it's like having a like a super powered air purifier built into the ventilation of exactly. exactly. Then they have FFC units, FFC. which stands for FCU purifier. Okay. These are designed to work with fan coil units, typically used in individual patient rooms to provide targeted air cleaning. So each room can have its own dedicated purification system. Exactly. And then for smaller spaces or areas that need more flexibility, they have KJ units. KJ units. Which stands for portable purifier. Okay. These are standalone units that can be moved around as needed. So it's like having, you know, a clean air SWAT team on standby. That's a great way to put it. Ready to deploy as needed. Exactly. And they're seeing some really promising results with these different MESP applications. Okay. Hospitals are reporting reduced rates of hospital-acquired infections. Wow. Improved patient outcomes and a safer working environment for their staff. That's amazing. It's really making a difference. It is. Are there any specific examples of hospitals that have seen this kind of success? Oh, definitely. There's Columbia Hospital, which installed 1,350 FFC units to ensure clean air throughout their facility. Wow. And then there's Guillen Hospital, which equipped their entire hospital with over 4,000 FFC units. That's a statement. It is a statement. I'm serious about it. Yeah, and it's not just hospitals and office buildings. Right. You mentioned tunnels earlier. I did, yeah. Tunnels are another area where MESP is making a big impact. All right. Think about it. I mean, they're in closed spaces. Yeah. Lots of vehicle exhaust, dust, other pollutants, you know? Right. It's got to be bad air quality. It's a recipe for poor air quality. Yeah. 
Traditional ventilation systems probably struggle to keep up. I would imagine so, yeah. They do, and that's where MESP comes in. Oh, yeah. It can be integrated into tunnel ventilation systems right. to effectively capture and remove those harmful pollutants. Wow. Creating a much safer environment for both workers and commuters. That's amazing. So it's like cleaning the air in a giant chimney. Yeah, I never would have thought about tunnels, but it makes sense. Yeah, it really highlights how versatile and adaptable MESP technology is. Right. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Yeah. It can be tailored to a wide range of needs and environments. That's good to know. But it all comes down to that one core principle, you yeah. know, yeah. capturing and inactivating those harmful particles that threaten our health and well-being. So we've seen how MESP is making a difference in offices, hospitals, tunnels. Right. You know, it's clear that this technology has the potential to really change the way we think about indoor air quality. It does. But what about the bigger picture? I mean, where does MESP fit into this growing movement toward healthier buildings and sustainable living? That's a great question. And I think MESP aligns perfectly with those goals. Okay. It's a technology that's not only effective, yeah. but also sustainable and energy efficient. Right. And as we become more aware of the impact our buildings have on our health, mm -hmm and the environment, solutions like MESP are going to become even more important. It's like we're at a turning point. We're moving away from just accepting poor indoor air quality right. as the norm yeah. and demanding better for ourselves and our communities. Exactly. And technologies like MESP are giving us the tools to create those healthier and more sustainable environments. Yeah, it really is amazing to think about how something so essential has been you know, kind of overlooked for so long. Yeah. But we're finally starting to wake up to the importance of it. Yeah, it does feel like a turning point. We're starting to understand that clean air isn't just a luxury. Right. It's really a fundamental part of a healthy and productive life. It is. And, you know, it's not just about individual well-being either. Yeah. This has implications for businesses, schools, uh -huh. hospitals, yeah. even entire cities. Absolutely. I mean, think, think about the economic impact of poor IAQ. Yeah. You know, reduced productivity. Increased health care costs. Right. Lost work days due to illness, you know. Wow, yeah. Addressing these issues can benefit everyone, from individuals to entire communities. It's like we're finally connecting the dots between clean air and this whole range of positive outcomes. We are. But how do we keep the momentum going? Right. What needs to happen to make clean air a priority? Oh, I think awareness is key. Okay. You know, we need to keep talking about the importance of IAQ, sharing information, uh -huh. educating people about the risks of poor air quality like, and the solutions that are available. And that's where, you know, resources like this deep dive come in. We're trying mm -hmm. to give people the tools to understand this invisible world and empower them to take action. Exactly. And it's not just about individual action either. Right. We need systemic change. Yeah. Stronger building codes that prioritize IAQ. Uh -huh. Incentives for businesses to invest in cleaner technologies, right. ongoing research and development to keep pushing the boundaries of innovation. It's like we need a multi-pronged approach tackling this issue from every angle. Yeah, we do. But I mean, I guess ultimately it comes down to just a shift in mindset. It does. You know, we have to stop thinking of clean air as an afterthought. Right. And start hmm. recognizing it as this fundamental element of a healthy yeah. and sustainable future. I couldn't agree more. Clean air should be a right. Absolutely. Not a privilege. Right. And with technologies like MESP, I mean, it seems like we have the power to actually make that happen. We do. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of MESP and indoor air quality. Yeah. You know, I want to leave our listeners with a thought to ponder. Okay. What role will you play in creating these healthier and more breathable spaces? You know, will you be an advocate for change in your workplace yeah. or your community? Uh -huh. Will you explore cleaner technologies for your home? Right. Or will you just commit to being more aware of the air you breathe? Yeah. Making conscious choices to support your health and well-being. Every breath we take is a chance to make a difference. It is. And with a little knowledge and a lot of collective action, mm. we can create a world where everyone can breathe easy